Space that was the multiverse. So I think this is running out of time if you are interested in it, as it is. I cannot say I am, just because I don't really... Man, I don't even know how many years it's been since I played a tabletop game. Just in general. But anyway, we are here for the weekly one-shot. So I'm still in a little bit of a bad mood after how annoying this freaking Mayday one was, and Iron Legacy is stepping up to be the one to accept my frustration. So here we are with a big game. So Jim knelt and gathered a handful of dry and lifeless soil. He smelled it and tasted it. Why, I don't really know, but okay. Grinding the bitter outlying dust between his teeth. He's here, the better manager announced. Now y'all might think you know this man. More it's caution. I've seen his deeds at another time, and he aims to do worse. Jim shook the dust off his hands and adjusted his hat against the harsh glare. I reckon his style of justice and mine don't exactly line up. But one thing's clear. We bring him in today, dead or alive. So we need mini-pack two. Who's in mini-pack two? I don't know. So Shattered Timelines will give you Crown Ranger and um, Iron Legacy. Vengeance will give you Parse. Final Wasteland is mini-pack too. So this is Advanced Iron Legacy. And now, with Iron Legacy, you know you're in for a fast game, which is really good, because for the entire month of May, I am pressed for time, and I can't really afford another one of those Mayday games. And overall, the deck is stacked kind of in your favor. You can kind of see what I mean. So let's just go ahead and get in, and I can show you the game text. Never let down my guard. Justice must be dispensed to all. Now. Think good and hard, partner. I aim to put you down, and I don't miss. So, if you don't know how Iron Legacy works, because he's... I don't think he's really played that often by a lot of people. To be completely honest, I think it's like the fourth or fifth time I've played him. He enters play on Ironclad Tyrant side. He, he will shuffle a number of cards from his deck until he gets his four ongoing cards. He will number heroes in play. Everything else goes back in the villain deck. It's shuffled. He will flip when he falls below 20 hit points. If you notice, he has a measly 32. I don't actually know if that's how much legacy he has, or if he actually has, like, one more just for the sake of having one more. Now, his danger sense is permanently on. You have to remember when you're facing this guy, all of his cards work in the context of a legacy deck. So, Danger Sense, the Legacy's first ability, always active. In the end of the villain turn, he deals each hero target three melee damage. So, I can't remember what the card is called now, the one where he's smashing the mobile defense platform on the card. It's like Flying Smash, I think. That's basically his end of turn effect, and he hits everyone with it. Now, in advanced mode, all the damage he does is irreducible, so if you're hoping, hey, Neurotoxin Dart Thrower and Kinetic Shield, you're in business, right? happening. So then once you knock him down low enough, he will flip. Now notice he only does this at the start of his turn, not as soon as he immediately goes below 20. It's not like Baron Blade or something where he just flips like that. There's a check that's going to be involved and you can bypass it, which I aim to do. So once he falls down low enough, he goes into Motivated by Desperation side. He will flip back if he has 25 or more HP. So on this side, Fortitude is permanently in effect. He takes one less damage. And then at the end of the villain turn, he deals the hero target with the lowest HP, hero minus one melee damage, and regains hero plus one HP. So this is the motivational charge in effect. And on advanced mode, whenever he's going to be dealt damage, he redirects it to the hero target with the highest HP. So this is basically like a reverse lead from the front. So hopefully you're up to speed now. Anyway, there are no emblems here, so we do not have one of his six nemeses in battle. And we'll get this show on the road. So he starts off with a final evolution. Nasty. We all take toxic damage for that, by the way. It's basically the haste and doom effect that Baron Blade is trying to use. Then the superhuman redirection that effect. So, like, that's also like lead from the front, I guess. That one doesn't really have a good parallel, I'm afraid. Demoralizing Presence is basically Surge of Strength. He deals increased damage, and then we hit, us, hit ourselves at the end of the turn. 
So former allies is basically the inverse of bolster allies. We all have to discard a card. We're gonna get rid of just doing my job. And then since his damage is irreducible, the overcharged null shield is not gonna do anything. This is the card that I was talking about earlier when I think I said kinetic something, since I don't play knife a lot. She's decent, don't get me wrong, it's just I prefer some of the other heroes more. For parse, segmentation fault is your best friend here, so we're gonna get rid of between the lines. And now for Fnatic, there's two ways to go about this. You can either start it off with end of days to wipe the board, basically have everyone pass their first turn, and then this will... If you're not familiar with the card, at the start of the environment turn, it's gonna wipe everything, all of his ongoings, unless he has his galvanize out. Downside though is you do have to sacrifice your setup for this first turn, and you can do this fairly quickly if you're willing to. So I'm going to not do the end of days route, we're going to go ahead and discard that. So beat down, this when he hits us and we can't deal damage. This also doesn't really have a good parallel to his deck, it's kind of like an inverse takedown or something. I'm not quite sure. So anyway, plus one due to demoralizing presence. Crown of Ranger cannot deal damage. And then here's the flying smash. Four damage across the board because of the presence. And then we hit ourselves. And two of them can't hit themselves, obviously. So we're going to start this off with by any means. That way anyone can hit this guy for more damage, not just Chrono Ranger. And I should also point out, his emblem is here because... There it is, the Rat Beast is his nemesis. They have your scent now, Khan advises the robotic arms stitched up Crown Ranger's side. I don't want to tell you what to do, but you should shoot them. So I don't really know if there's another hero or villain who has a nemesis in the environment normally. Like, Omnitron might be an exception, but I'm not entirely sure. That would be Omnitron with the nemesis of Omnitron th Well, Omnitron 10 in Omnitron 4 with Omnitron 3. At least I think the Omnitron is Omnitron 3. There's just too damn many of these things. And I don't know about you guys, but I was kind of disappointed that there isn't actually an Omnitron villain team character. You have the Omni Blade, yes, but come on, can we have like Omnitron 9 or something? So when we drew our hat. That's enough of my little tangent, I guess. Now, there's no point in really going ham on him just yet, so I can play Prime Punch and hit him for 4 damage. We don't really want to go ham until we take care of that final evolution. So, 2 damage each shot. He gets 2 back because of final evolution. And now you have 2 options. You can deal damage here. So, what you could do is you could start the Segmentation Fault and start cleaning these out. Because keep in mind, Fnatic, if you didn't notice, has the Consecrated Ground. So I'm thinking... I can get rid of the... I'm gonna have, like, no cards here, I'm afraid, but... I think this is gonna be fast enough we can do this. So we're gonna get rid of the Quick Calculation. Like, I don't really see a point in keeping this one, because we... It gives us three cards, but maybe I can have more use of this. Well, it's gonna be a fast card. So we want to pop Final Evolution here to stop his healing. We want to play Consecrated Ground. That allows us to destroy this. We can hit him for two. And we're going to stop there. Now, our top card is Absolution. So I'm going to go ahead and use it. We'll use Resolute. Top card's Absolution. As for the powers, we're going to go ahead and swing that sucker. Radiant damage, because that's how Fnatic rolls. So we get a Zealous Offense. In case you're wondering how I knew Absolution was the top card, I have my deck marked. So the Chupacabra is going to go for the lowest HP person, which is going to be Parse. We can now deal damage with Parse and Chrono. Out comes Flying Assault. We have to sac uh, sacrifice some equipment cards here, I'm afraid. 
three damage to three different guys, so this is kind of like Flying Smash, I guess. It's called Flying Assault. He just has two birds in it. And there goes Absolution. So I don't know about you, but I'm adjusting my hat. We're going to play the ultimate target on him. And now we can start pinging him for three damage at a time. Got eye on the prize. So right here, if I do this, the damage is going to go up to five, and that's going to get redirected. We do not want to do that. So what I can do instead is I can do battlefield experience. Actually, hold on. If I hit him any lower, he's going to flip. So right now the big question is, can I kill him before he goes back? So I have between the lines to give another power play, which will... Yeah, she'll deal four. So I can do four and four. Actually, hold on a second. I can do a lot of damage here. Let's do this way. So we're going to use Battlefield Experience, we are going to pop Battlefield Experience, since that's going to allow us to draw and play a card. This is going to be amplified to 3 and 3 for a total of 6, now getting down to 15. I can play, the Prime Punch isn't going to help, I can do the Wrecking Uppercut and hit him for 4, knocking him down to 11. So we got the Servo Gauntlet there. So I can use Between the Lines here to give another play to Knife. So we can Prime Punch him now. And then we can shoot him. We got Data Mining. So the question is, do I want to try Divine Focus? If I do, I can, I can hit him for 3 damage. My top card... Actually, I don't need to. I can kill him right here. So yeah, when I use my power, I can give the play over to Knife and do that one more time. So let's Holy Nova for health. So I was trying to figure out what my top card is, but I was needed to look one play further and I would have had my answer. Oh, it doesn't matter. So that was two rounds, I think? Yeah, that's the downside to Iron Legacy, it's just a small HP pool. So in case you thought you were going to get rocked like last time, and if you remember last time, because it was a while back, here's your previous encounter with Iron Legacy. So we had Mr. Fixer, the Adept and Scholar here, and it was really, really rough. I think your only way to get through this one is you have to sacrifice the Adept or something like that. It's a very, very complicated one. I can't stress that enough. But yeah, with that out of the way, you got my warning for March. Just do, or not March, May. Due to the nature of how this month is going to go, I don't know if these one shots are going to be on time, if I'm going to get them done at all, or what. In case you're wondering, it's just there's a crap load of games coming out this month. I'm already doing Trails in the Sky. There's three other ones coming out this month that are types of games I would play. And trying to fit all these together is going to be tough. Like, I'm, odds are I'm going to have to stop playing League for a little while. And worse can worse, I may have to stop playing Sentinels, which may not be a bad thing, because I might be back in time for Villains, you know? People will want to see Bugbear in action, right? Or Hammer and Anvil, or Biomancer, or something. The fun thing about Biomancer is he's going to be the Scholar's Nemesis, the only one in the game. Other than the one that will appear in, uh, I forgot whose deck has her medic. But yeah, Scholar kind of got overlooked in the whole Nemesis thing. I know, heartbreaking. Poor, poor guy. 
unfortunately I don't think he's really crying over it. But yeah, Colin Quits here, I'm the Hero of Light, thanks for watching.